AMD GPUs are severely broken? Twitter, what is going on? And uh, let's find out about all the good stuff that's gonna be happening at CES. I'm your Brett host, everybody. Let's get into the hot news. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your, like, Brett brunch. Um, normally, we have this up at roughly 9 a.m. Eastern, but because our editor is away for holiday and I couldn't work on Sunday, we're a little bit behind. So it's going to be like between breakfast and lunch on the East Coast. And I know that everybody says, oh, but I'm in Europe or whatever. But l listen, anytime you watch this, it's breakfast time, okay? But let's jump right on into the top story, which is about a controversy surrounding AMD's RX 7900 series GPUs. It came out last week that AMD is allegedly shipping unfinished product with their RX 7900 series GPUs. This is based on some details being found about some non-working shader prefetch hardware that's being baked into the RX 7900 series GPUs. And then on top of that, the details are indicating that this is an A0 revision of the chips, which according to all of the assumptions means that AMD is shipping the first batch of silicon that they're actually getting out for this Navi 31 GPU. And with those issues being baked into the A0 revision of having a non-working shader prefetch, that means that AMD is shipping out something that is broken. And then if you look at a lot of details that are coming out from reviewers who have hands on the cards, kind of indicating some abnormal behavior with these GPUs, making it seem like something is desperately wrong. Which, if you want AMD to be losing, this is a great story to actually have, but turns out that the truth is not so black and white. AMD coming out with some details after the fact in indicating that yes, there is that shader prefetching hardware that's on the silicon, but it was never meant to be used. Everything that we've shipped is fully functional. And with regards to the code that proved that this could potentially be broken, they said that the code in question controls an experimental function which was not targeted for inclusion in these products and will not be enabled in this generation of product. This is a common industry practice to include Include experimental features to enable exploration and tuning for deployment in future product generations. So it turns out that AMD is saying, hey, this has nothing to do with the hardware that we've promised you that you're gonna get. Everything's okay. It still works the way that it's supposed to. And then on top of that, when it comes to the A0 uh, allegations that are being levied against AMD and it being an unfinished product, that's just not how things work. If you read about how chip silicon comes out, Nvidia ships A0 silicon too, because that means that they got it right on the first try. They actually have everything developed. And yes, there might be some experimental features that they baked into it that they didn't expect to actually fully launch, but that can inform future silicon coming out later. But that also doesn't mean that AMD can't improve on what's available right now, and they might actually release an A1 version or B0 version in order to make improvements on what's currently available. They did this with RDNA 2, the 6900 XT shipped on A0 silicon, and that's a mighty fine GPU. The 7900 series GPUs appear to be in the same realm. Everything is in alleged working order. There are driver issues and there are BIOS issues, but there is no hardware silicon issues that AMD is shipping out with a defective product and that any assumption to that fact is just kind of misreading the situation. And that's being backed up by other reviewers such as Gordon Ung over at PC World, as well as Ian Cutras over at More Than More, saying that anyone shipping A0 silicon is an effing machine. It's godlike. The simulation and manufacturing prediction met the product design first time to everyone saying unfinished then you just shat on five thousand plus engineers that got a shiny electric rock to work at retail on day one. Continuing on to say, for scope, most smartphone silicon is A0. It's rare for something bigger to be A0, but it does happen. It also comes down to how many spins are planned. Most big chips aim for A0, factor in a second spin, but budget for three or four. So to ship A0 for it to line with fabs, kudos. It is not a problem that is actually real. It is something that people are saying, oh, you, you didn't have to make any revisions. You suck. How dare you do it right on the first time, AMD? Ha preposterous, you're not good enough to do that. So according to everything that's going on, any hardware defect in the GPUs is more overblown than is actually real. That does not mean that the 7900 series GPUs don't have issues. They have idle power issues. They do have some clock speed instability, as well as a few other things that make them not perfect. But AMD, at least according to their public statements seem confident that they can fix them in driver updates or potentially with a vBIOS update as well. And it's not 
defective. Let me know what you think of all this down below in the comments. But in Friday's episode of Hot News, we talked about the fact that MSI didn't have any RX 7900 series GPUs. And I went on a speculation rant, kind of comparing it to GPP and potentially maybe they're getting strong armed by Nvidia. Well, it turns out that if I had just waited a few hours, uh, there's reports coming out that MSI is just actually skipping the reference editions. They're not gonna be having any of the reference edition AMD GPUs and they're only gonna be launching custom GPUs in Q1. MSI not still officially showing off anything that they actually have, but it looks like they're still gonna be a player in the game. But it does appear like whatever timeline AMD had to get them GPUs wasn't enough for them to feel comfortable doing what every other company did. So it doesn't look like to be a huge problem, but I did say it was speculation and I speculated real hard, but I'm speculating that you wanna hear crypto stonks. Let's look at that, Bitcoin. It's it's flat, 16.732. Ethereum's flat as well to be at 11.82 and Dogecoin is down just a little bit to be at 7.7 .7 cents. And I'm down to hear Reese for UFD deals. Yeah. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals. We bring you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. As you can hear, my voice is a little strained from shouting during the World Cup. But we have another special edition of UFT Deals today, brought to you in partnership by our friends over at Best Buy. We'll be checking out our favorite categories in their top deals section, which are valid through to the 21st. Jumping in on the laptop side of things, we have the HP Envy X360 2-in-1 with its 15.6 inch 1080p touchscreen display, an eight core Ryzen 7 5825U, 12 gigs of DDR4 memory, and a 512 gig NVMe SSD. You can pick up the Nightfall Black version for $699.99, which is $350 off. But then on the headphone side of things, we have the Astro A10 wired over ear headset going for only $19.99, which is $40 off. You can pick up this headset in black and red, black and green, or white and blue to color match your preferred system. But then carrying on with the peripheral front, we have the Razer Basilisk Ultimate Wireless Gaming Mouse, which comes bundled with Razer's charging dock for only $67.99, which is $102 off. And last but not least, we have the Samsung Odyssey CRG9 with its $49 inch curved VA panel, a resolution of 5120 by 1440, 120 hertz refresh rate, and a four millisecond response time. You can pick up this gaming and productivity monster for only $849.99, which is $350 off. And don't forget, Best Buy Total Tech members receive exclusive deals. In addition to 24-7, 365 tech support, worry-free product protection, free standard installation, delivery, and haul away. And don't forget to check out the top deals section for yourself because you never know what you might find. But don't worry, like always, you'll find the links to these featured deals in the video description. But until next time, I'm I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett Hose for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thank you, Reese. Mighty cool. Great deals. Check them out at the link in the video description. Check out Stadia. It's going away on January 18th, but now Ubisoft games are gonna be available to download on PC with Ubisoft providing the keys so that you can actually download those games in case you did purchase them on Stadia, which if you also got the refund for, that's kind of cool. That's a free video game. But what's not going to be kind of cool is having NFL game day ticket, Sunday ticket package on Apple TV or anything like that. Apple TV pulling out of any discussion with the NFL or Direct TV in order to get the Sunday ticket put on to the Apple TV Plus setup that they have. And what's also being pulled out is NVIDIA is killing off game stream, which is a feature that allows you to stream from your NVIDIA GPU to some sort of different device. Kind of think of it like Steam Link, but you could use it on a Shield tablet, a Shield portable or even their shield tv so you can no longer use nvidia's own software for that they're now suggesting that you switch on over to steam link in case you want to do it they're providing a reasonable alternative steam link's not terrible it just happened to be that game stream could do a little bit more it was natively integrated in case you want to check out some long forgotten lore of uft tech history i used game stream on a on a, a PS4 Pro when it first launched in South Africa. I did remote play into my gaming laptop and then I did game streaming from that onto my Shield handheld and it was a glorious experience. You guys can go watch that super old video. I'll leave a link in the video description. But one of the things that's coming out of this is that I found out that AMD has a version of game stream. It's called AMD Link. Had no idea. Only found out because they were like, hey, NVIDIA shutting down theirs. Don't forget about us. I didn't even know they existed. It launched in March. What do you know? But you know what else is getting pulled out? John Carmack from Meta. We have a whole bunch of social media news to get through, but John Carmack, the co-creator of Doom and Quake, formerly of id Software, is now leaving Meta after being one of the heads of their VR or Meta departments because he believes that the 
cost effectiveness and efficiency of Meta no longer matches the vision of what they can accomplish with hardware. And it does appear like he's addressing the fact that Meta has systemic issues that are creating problems with the Oculus branding and making it so that he no longer believes it's a viable path for him to move forward with. And we'll see how that plays out. Not very confidence inspiring in Meta's business plan overall. It's about to get even more tough with competition because HTC is gonna be announcing their MetaQuest competitor at CES. They have details that they've kind of divulged, but it's gonna be announced on January 5th. They're gonna have full color pass-through video feed like the Quest Pro. You'll get two hours of use on a single charge with controllers that have six degrees of freedom and hand tracking, and it'll either operate as a standalone device or you can connect it to PC. No details on whether or not there's gonna be eye tracking, but hopefully, it's at least financially reasonable, although given HTC's recent track history with Vive, not betting on that being a strong possibility. And if I were a betting man, I would have lost big because I thought, you know, okay, the World Cup is happening. This is gonna be Twitter's peak usage. They're not gonna do anything that's gonna potentially draw more attention to the fact that things are really bad and broken with them. They're just gonna have a silent weekend. Nope completely wrong. So we talked about in Friday's episode of Hot News that Elon Musk was very upset with some jet tracking that was going on. And after we recorded that episode, they started banning journalists who linked to the suspended account, not to any other identifying information. And then from there started banning accounts for Mastodon or people posting their links to alternative social media platform. And then it came out that they introduced a policy right as the World Cup was ending, saying that they were gonna ban free promotion of competing social media websites such as Facebook, Instagram, Mastodon, Tribal, Post, Noster, and True Social. Curiously leaving absent things like YouTube, which happened to be one of the largest social media platforms, but you can't bite the hand that feeds you too much. Additionally, they were gonna ban links in Twitter bios, especially lead to things like Linktree that tend to aggregate all of your social media feeds. The strange thing about this is that when this came out, most people were just like, what is going on? This is absolutely absurd, especially with the previous comments from Elon Musk that anybody who has to build a wall to keep people from leaving is just gonna be doomed to fail. So it does seem to be that Twitter was going through something like that. But then after that, they removed the policy, especially after Elon had conversations on Twitter with people who were just like, you shouldn't do this, this is bad because like social media businesses exist. And he was like, oh yeah, didn't think of that. We probably could could do this better. Anyways, that's not before notable accounts like the founder of Y Combinator got banned for having Mastodon links in his Twitter profile. And then it led to a poll by Twitter Safety saying, should we have a policy preventing the creation of use of existing accounts for the main purpose of advertising other social media platforms, which was not the initial intent behind the ruling. The initial intent was that you were not allowed to post links at all. And then it became clear that after people were just like, this is stupid, they were like, oh, we just, we just met if that's your sole purpose on Twitter, which obviously makes sense. YouTube bans that, other platforms I suppress that. It makes a lot of sense for that to be the policy, not what they initially came out with. But with that, there's supposed to be repeals of the bans that actually happen on journalists. Those have started to lift as well as bans that happen for people sharing their links. Those should also start lifting, as well as the fact that Twitter banned the entire Mastodon Twitter page instead of, it, but like left up Facebook and Instagrams, which is like also strange. But then in the biggest twist, Elon Musk posted posting a Twitter poll asking whether or not he should stay as the Twitter CEO with a large portion of the votes being yes for a long portion of time as the Twitter poll was up. And just as of right before filming, it has finally concluded with 17 and a half million votes and 57.5% saying that yes, Elon Musk should step down as the head of Twitter. Gonna create a bit of a problem when you look at Elon Musk's response to how the poll started trending, kinda indicating that, oh, be careful what you wish for many people who desire power shouldn't have it. And then also tweeting out things like there's nobody competent to be able to actually run it who could who could actually do it. So it, is he gonna shut Twitter down and just be like, nobody else could run it besides me. So if you don't have a head, it's all doomed. We'll keep you updated on all of that and we'll see what happens tomorrow with regards to Twitter, but also more reports coming out that Twitter is laying off parts of its infrastructure team with more people getting laid off via email. It's all in a completely weird situation. Also, Intel in a completely weird situation when it comes to its competition with AMD, the 13900K, 
fantastic chip, very good at multi-core. Kind of loses a little bit to AMD in single core, but they're trying to make up for that with the 13900KS, which is supposed to be up to six gigahertz in clock speeds. But new Cinebench scores are coming out indicating that it's, it's not that much faster. It's like between three and 5%, which is just, if you're gonna launch this for a much higher price point, this is not a good look for Intel when it comes to competing with what we're expecting AMD to announce, which is their X3D chips at CES. So this could potentially put Intel into a bind, but we do have some details on the next gen of Intel's chips, which is the at least socket that it's gonna go into, LGA 1851 being confirmed as the next gen Meteor Lake and Air Lake socket. But in case you're wondering what's going on with CES, AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA are all expected to be there. NVIDIA is gonna have a keynote speech on January 3rd at 8 a.m. Pacific time with the 4070 Ti allegedly being announced there and launching on the 5th. AMD is gonna have their keynote January 4th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific. And Intel is just gonna be there. We're expecting them to announce potentially the 13900KS as well as all of their mobile chips for 13th gen. That's gonna be good. As well as for the AMD side of things, we're expected to get an announcement of the non-X version of those CPUs. And now we have some leaked slides from that presentation indicating the pricing of the 7900 is gonna be 429, the pricing of the 7700 is gonna be 329, and the pricing of the 7600 is gonna be 229, which is actually really dang good. But on top of that, you get added value because they're going to be 65 watt TDP chips and they're going to have included coolers, which just makes it a much better value overall. Obviously, the difficulty with Ryzen 7000 is still going to be motherboard pricing, but with the non-X versions, they're being priced a little bit below what the current X chips are at on sale at the various different websites that you can get them on. But uh, it looks like AMD is trying to get people to switch and doing it in a budget way. We'll see how this all plays out. This episode of Hot News is played out. I'll be back here for more Hot News tomorrow, friends. Goodbye.